Hey everybody, welcome to Kingdom Justice, and this is your host Courtney Jones speaking. And today is day two. Uh, remember, yesterday we was just trying this out to see how it sounds, and we're still trying to get the system down on this. You know, it's a, a new station that we're on, so we're just kind of trying to get out. You know, just trying to figure out, you know, some of the things, some of the buttons, some of the things, and making sure you know uh, the voice is right and everything is okay and, and the levels are right and things like that we're trying to make sure that you know we're doing a good job of and checking it out but yesterday you know we went through it and we you know checked it out a little bit and I didn't want to teach too much or preach too much because we're going to start the show of course we're going to start it uh, if you don't know the show is going to be Monday it's going to be Monday through Friday at 5 p.m. Central now that's a little bit different than we you know of course we got the other show which we still have the same show we still have the show on blog talk uh, blog talk radio kingdom justice we still have that show and that show is uh it's sunday it's sunday through wednesday so it's sunday through wednesday and it's at 9 p.m central so these uh it's going to be a little bit different it'll be five days a week with this show another thing this show is going to be a different time zone uh blog talk we usually go maybe an hour hour 30 minutes um uh, but on here we're going to just be from we're going to range from about 30 to 45 minutes well, it's not, you know, as long, but, you know, we do serious, so it's okay. So we're going to go into this. And today what we're talking about here, so we're going to practice this out, get this lesson out. And today what we're going to talk about is evil spirits in the high places, evil spirits in the high places. And that's what we're going to talk about today, evil spirits in the high places. Now, what I want you to do is first I want you to go to uh, Ephesians, go to Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 and in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 Paul talking he said for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places and spiritual wickedness in high places and that's what I want to open your eyes up to I want to open up your eyes and your ears and your heart to understanding what is Paul talking about here? And so the thing is, what Paul is talking about, a lot of us got to understand, is Paul is talking about people, these spirits uh, that we're going to talk about, these spirits love to live in the high places. They love to live in the high places. They love to be in government officials. Uh, you know, they love to be government officials. They love to do all these sort of things. Um, they love to be in, over the food, the water, the certain thing. They need to be in power. Uh, they love to be in politics, kings. They love to be uh, making decisions in government. They love to be in law enforcement. They love to make laws. They love to make laws. They love to break them. And they want to keep you to break them. So they set up a system that they can always keep you to be accused. And a lot of times people think this Babylonian system that, you know, like a lot of countries that love to live uh, the way America lives. You know, a lot of people want to come over here from different places. They want to come to Babylon. It's no different than in the Bible. Every nation, when people want to come to every ethnic background, no matter what, they want to come and build one city. And the city is a freedom to do what you want, freedom from God and from every and from, from whatever, you know, you're running from. And a lot of times that's what you have. And what happens is that you get what you call opinions. And when you get opinions, opinion, opinions are something that the spirits, they created to get rid of the truth. If everybody keep making opinions, it's never the truth. So anytime anyone uh, say, "Hey, this is light," they will say, "Oh, it's no such thing as light." Every you know, everybody has their own opinion. You see, it's no such thing as truth. You see, it's it's what you believe. It's no such thing. And so this is what the enemy to use. He he didn't trick them into believing in opinions. That everyone should be free to do what they want to have or have their own thought and their own opinion. Because he know how God's system works. God's system, everybody told, dependent on him. They're dependent on God, and they're dependent on his system, and they have to stay in the system. And so, therefore, his system is not like that. His system is ever a free fall because it looks like it's free, but it's going to send you to captivity. You're going to be in hell for the rest of your life, and then that's what you're going to be for the rest of your existence, and that's forever. So that means, you know what, you're trade 40, 50 years on this planet, 60 years on this planet, 
for eternity, and that's what most people do. And usually these spirits appeal. They appeal to the people who want to be over people. They want to be empowered. That's in their heart. See, no demon or nothing can trick usually trick people unless certain things are in their heart. That's why they're able to get deceived by certain things because he's able to deceive them because they want these things. You know, a lot of times, some of these, you know, they want these things in their heart. They have these desires of these things. So what happened is these spirits come along and help them get these things. They help them believe that they can take them to the next level. They can be over the people. They can be empowered. They can be somebody. And that sounds good, and they, and they make them feel like they're in control of these spirits. And then all of a sudden they burn in hell, and they find out that, you know what, I ain't in no control at all. But they make them feel that way. They want the power, the money the pleasures, the all this, to so be obsessed with it. And so these spirits take advantage of them. And if they do not fulfill what these spirits want, these spirits will pull their ticket just as well. If they're not going to do what they want to do, they're going to pull their ticket just as well. So you're going to have to, if you're going to sell your soul out, then this is what they're looking for. Now let's show you how God was always talking about this. I want you to see how, see, because some believers, because some believers like to believe that they follow God in cleanness. Um, you know, I hear this all the time when people think I have to. We supposed to live this godly, clean life, and this is usually what they what they believe. We gotta live this godly, clean life. Uh, try to stay away from sin and stay away from these things. But 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 unbelief is the problem. See, by them never going do any of God's will, they just trying to live this life and suppress themselves and live this life is not what God's talking about. See, Jesus was was here to destroy the high places. That's what his job was. We are his body. And if we do not build ourselves up, there'd be this temple that's acceptable to God to go out and do his work, not just be a temple that's sitting around saying, oh, we clean, and we never do anything. We never believe that we have the ability to do it. We don't go do anything. We just let anything stump us. We let everything into our atmosphere and our planet and, and, and do whatever it does. And we sit back like we don't, we don't have no authority and no power and no speech in this. So we sit back and we just sing the same old songs, do the same old things, listen to the same old sermons, and dial generation to generation. And they just keep on letting the devil and them keep living, keep doing what they're doing. So let's see about this. Let's see how God felt about these things now for people who think that they're pleasing to God, but yet they are not doing what God, completely what God wants them to do. And so a lot of times they, they're trying to look like, you know, to do that, and they're missing out on certain things. So let's go to 1 Kings. Chapter 15, verse 14. It says, But the high places were not taken away. But the high places were not taken away. Nevertheless, the heart of Asa was uh, devoted to the Lord all his days. Now, now here's a man, Asa, whose heart was devoted to God, it says, but he did not take off the high places. Now, we're going to find out what God feels about that. Let's go a little further. 1 Kings, chapter 22, verse 23. Now, it's talking about his son, uh, Jehoshaphat. It says, he walked in all the ways of Asa. Now, notice that. It says, not in God, but his daddy. He said, he walked in all the ways of Asa, his father. He did He did not turn aside from it. See, he did not turn from, from it. He walked in the path of his daddy because he thought his daddy impressed God. He did not turn from the path, not of God, but his daddy. So, watch what happened. It says, Doing, he say, doing right in the sight of the Lord. However, the high places were not taken away. The people still sacrificed and burnt incense on the high places. Now, see what I'm saying? See, he walked. Now he see his dad walk with uh, and and look pleasant in the eyes of God. He he was dedicated, it says, but he didn't take out the high places, and that was something God did not like. But his son did, adopted the same thing he did. So, and he did the same thing, so it looked the same way. What he did would look like pleasing in God's sight, but he did not take out the high place. Now, what happened if he can't get away from what his father? What if you do the same thing they do? Well, you would do some things that are pleasing in God's sight, but you are not taking out the high places the way you're supposed to take out. That's the problem that you're having. So, so a lot of times people don't understand this, and, and so... They'll do the same old thing, you know, that everybody else been doing, and this is what end up happening. They'll do the same exact things, and nothing never really get done. So let's go a little further than that. Give me a second. Let's go. I gotta go all the way up here, cause I want you to see this. 
Okay, let's go to Micah, Micah chapter 1, verse 3. For behold, the Lord is coming forth from his place. He will come down and tread on the high places of the earth. See, this is what God is wanting to do. He wants to come down and destroy these high places. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 2. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 2. The people were still sacrificing on the high places because there was no house built for the name of the Lord, no temple, no body, until those days. Now Solomon loved the Lord, walked in the statues of his father David. Now not the statues of God, but David. It said this, except he sacrificed and burned incense on the high places. Now, David, we know, did not go and do such certain things like that, but Solomon did. Now, we know Solomon built a temple, where for is a physical temple, for is a building. But he was, he did not destroy the high places. Now, we know what the high places are now. See, we didn't already see Paul just told us in Ephesians what the high places are. That's what we wrestle against, the princes of darkness. Uh, you know, the, the the powers against the rulers of darkness of the world, against the spiritual wickedness in high places. You see, and so this is what I want you to understand. This is something that God wants us to do. Let's, let's go to Deuteronomy 33, verse 29. Blessed are you, O Israel, who is like you, a people saved by the Lord, who is the shield of your help and the sword of your majesty, so your enemies will before you and you will tread upon their high places high places tread upon their high places so that means this is something that God wants for us to do he expects for us to do it like I said a lot of times people think they're too busy trying to do this walk instead of doing the will of God you know Jesus told you whoever do the will of God um, whoever do the will of God is my mother, brother, sister. Whoever do the will of God, see, will of God, what God wants. Not what you want to give him, but what he wants. And so a lot of times this, this, this need to be preached more. This need to be preached more because what's going on now, you got a church full of people who's not doing the things they're supposed to do because the devil has invaded these churches with these different spirits. He has invaded these churches and took over these places as well as the places of the world. And he didn't cause those places in the world, the high places, the government, these uh, certain things. He didn't cause them to take, uh, take over the churches. Well, the churches are afraid of persecution. The churches don't want to stand because they don't want to be martyrs. They don't want to be this. And they don't want to lose what they have. They don't want to lose their livelihood. So we, what we didn't have was a lot of Aaron preachers. You get these Aaron preachers. That they're preaching what the people want to hear, and then we get those Micah preachers that we know that they just mixing everything together. Everything they can find, every god they can find, every myth they can find, every anything they can find, they mix it all together. And people love to go listen to different things because they got these tingling ears, these itchy ears, and that they want to be scratched. And so they jump to every form of doctrine that they can think of. And so we they have such a people. Now I want to show you some of these spirits. So we can understand this. Now, you have the first spirit we have here is an Amorite spirit. It's an Amorite spirit. means mountain. Means mountain. Now, this is an Amorite spirit. means mountain. Now, let me show you something here because I want you to see this for yourself. <clears throat> I want you to see this for yourself. If we go to Numbers, Numbers chapter 13, verse 29, it says, The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Malachites, and that's the spirit also that we're going to have to get rid of because if you don't get rid of this spirit, this is why the church is not moving. It says, The Amalekites dwell in the lands of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. The mountains mean the hot places. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea. And usually the Canaanites dwell in a place where the lowlands, but they also can be in the hot places. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 7. Verse 1, when the Lord thy God brings thee into the land where thou goes to possess it and has cast out many nations 
before thee the Hittites, the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Parasites, and the Havites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. That means that these spirits are, are, are stronger than us without God. So without our Lord Jesus, they are stronger than we are. And this is why they're taking advantage of people, because when people are not following the will of Jesus, you know, you're not Jesus' children. You, you are children of the world. You're walking in folly. You're walking in hypocrisy. And so this is how these things are taking advantage of you, because the devil is an accuser, meaning that in this world, it would mean he's a prosecutor. So he's trying to accuse you in front of God. He's bringing the case in front of God in front of you so he can try to punish you. So if you walk in hypocrisy, that gives him all he needs to get in there and cause all kinds of problems in your life. And so if you walk in, in righteousness and meaning right standard with God, therefore he can't accuse you of anything. So what the devil like to do, he like to come around and make you think about the things you used to do. And so therefore, listen, that's what the blood is for. So the blood has been on that. That means that, you know what, your blood testifying for you. So there's no sense of you to even, even take, you know, listen to that. That stuff never happened. You moved on. You know, like I said before, I, mean, I tell people experiences that happened to me in my life because that's for their benefits, you see. Um, but if you ask me, I never did anything wrong in my life, you see. And so that's the same thing with Paul. Paul would tell people, you know, all these things about I used to do this. Then he said, I never wronged any man because, see, that's what you have to understand. That's what has to be in your heart. And those things are for a testimony that were God and brought you, then, then forgave you for them, let you see that it don't matter what stain you done had, that he didn't wash you and made you clean as snow. It don't make no difference. And so that's for you to just say, hey, listen, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I ain't never did anything. But I'm going to show you how God wanted this to happen. This is God's will. Now, God's will is to get rid of these get rid of these demons. Now, the Amalekites is a demon. And what Amalekites mean, um, what Amalekites mean, it means the eyes of doubt. That's what it means. You look it up, the eyes of doubt, spiritual blindness. It means what it does is try to put you in spiritual blindness. You see, it has you chasing things that you don't, that ain't even there. So therefore, you chasing after, I can't commit adultery, I can't do you chasing sins. But when God's saying that, listen, believe on me, that, you know, I'll, I'll wash you clean and I will keep you clean, stay with me, trust my spirit, and believe that I, you have the power. When God is telling you these things, you don't believe. So you don't believe that God, that what Jesus do, you can do. A greater. You don't believe that, so you won't do it. You ain't going to rise to You're going to rise and fall to what you believe. So you don't believe you can do what Jesus can do, even though Jesus told you you can do what you can do. And even though Jesus kept on trying to encourage people to tell people, what I'm doing, you can do. Peter want to walk on the water? Come on here. See, he didn't say, well, you can't do such a thing. No, no. Come on. Come on. He, you know, and see, Jesus told you this. He said, hey, listen, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you can talk to that mountain and say, that mountain is an Amorite. We're going to see what Amorite is. Remember, we're going back to the Amorite. I want you to see this now. Remember what I just said. An uh, Amorite spirit represents a mountain, a high place. This is the one Jesus said you can talk to until the fall into the ocean and will. The ocean, the sea, represents the pit, meaning hell. That's why Jonah went down to the sea, the pit, the hell. And so, therefore, you have this right here where it means mountain people. Okay, that means people that's in the high places. Also, it means renown. Renown means uh, Nephilim, uh, Anak. They had the children of Anak uh, in Numbers. It talks about this. Numbers, um, uh, I think it's number 13. It talks about the children of Anak, um, the giants, the Nephilim. Um, these are giants, and this is what Amorites are. They are giant, uh, giant spirits. They, uh, people who usually, like I said, president, kings, uh, dictators, these sort of people. Usually these kind of people uh, are governed by Amorite spirits. They want to be in power. They want to be in control. They want to be on top. And what they do is they create laws, and they create things to keep people at the bottom so they can stay richer in power. Everyone else can stay lower. They don't want people to know what they know and come to their level. Because if they did, then, then guess what? They wouldn't be so big, wouldn't they? So they need you to stay at a certain pace. So this is how centuries always been ran. Pharaohs don't want no one to know what they know. Kings don't want no one to know what they know. So this is how they stay up high and they keep everybody else down low. 
So to keep everybody down low, then they have to have what you call a military. They've got to have a military or law enforcement to increase these laws. Well, this is where the next period comes in and what God wanted to get rid of. It's called a Jebusite. A Jebusite spirit, what a Jebusite spirit is, is a thrasher and a stumper. It's what it does. It, it's like to keep people down. They like to break people down, take people confidence, keep people, uh, you know, keep people broken down, don't do anything. And usually when they do this, they create this thing called a parasite demon uh, spirit in a person where a person feel crippled. Uh, they can't do anything. They don't see themselves going anywhere. Uh, they don't see themselves doing anything. They can't get themselves. You know, I, you know, they can't get their mind right. They, they just feel like I'm so low, I'm so ugly, I'm so this, I don't have that. That's what this thing causes in people. It beat people down it's like fence. It molests people, torment people. Um, these kind, this is this kind of spirit that's, that's operating to do such a things as these. It likes to keep people beat down and keep people where they where they feel that they need the Amorite. You see, I need the government. I need them. If I don't have them, what I'm gonna do? If I don't have this person, what I'm doing? If I don't have that pastor, what I'm gonna do? So they 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 want you to rely on the Amorites. So they beat you down, put you in these positions. They strip you of all your your spiritual authority, where you feel you can't do anything, and then you have to focus on the Amorite. And so what happens a lot of times is that these things are not just so much in the world; they have been in the church. And the Jebusites the guy in the church and the preachers and Ben Amorites in the church was everybody praising them. He's the one with the jets. He's the one with all the money. He's the one with all this. And everybody else just in there paying, paying, you know, if you ain't got that money, we got a problem. Other than that, this is how he wanted. He don't want to teach you the true word. He don't want you to be self-sufficient in Christ. He wants you to be self. He wants you to be reliant on him. And he gives you precept by precept, piece by piece, where you can never get to where you need to be. And he take advantage of you. And so what happened is, we'll go to 2 Samuel. I'm going to show you a story about what happened with this. 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 6. Now, when we go to this in 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 6, it's talking about, it's talking about David. David had the same thing happen to him. And let's talk about this. It say, and the king and his men went to Jerusalem unto the Jebusite, the inhabitants of the land. Now, what ended up happening in the story is that uh, the Jebusites end up inhabiting. They took over. They were taking over Jerusalem. So God sent David down to Jerusalem. He wanted to take Jerusalem back, but the people was all uh, the people was uh, possessed by the Jebusites, meaning that they couldn't do anything. They was blind and lame. Cause that's usually what happens to them people. They don't see themselves for what they are, so they're in prison. And so this is what happened. So God suddenly said, the king and his men went to Jerusalem unto the Jebusites, the inhabitants. Of the land, which uh, which spoken unto David, saying, "Except thou take away the blind and the lame, thou shalt not come in." Now they told David, and this is the Jebusite speaking to David. Unless you take out the blind and the lame, you you should not come in. You should not come in. So this spirit was trying to, to tell David. This spirit is trying to show, tell David that, hey, listen, um, you can't take out the blind and the lame. You can't come in here. You see, so let's go. Let's go down to verse eight. It says, and David said, on that day, whoever gets, whoever get up to the gutter and smite the Jebusites and the lame and the blind, they are hated. They are hated of David's soul. He shall be chief and captain. Wherefore, they said, the blind and the lame shall not come into the house. And that's what I want you to understand. That's why it's so, it's so serious. Because you are not going to get into the kingdom of heaven being blind, lame. You're not going to get into that kingdom being that way. That's why Jesus healed them first. But you're not going to get into the kingdom being blind and lame sacrifices. You know, and you see how mad God was about them bringing him blind and, and 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 lame and crippled sacrifices. He was really mad about this issue when people try to bring him these things. He was mad about this, and so he was yelling even at the priest about this and how it's a curse. A lot of times we hear prosperity preachers take this and use it the wrong way. You no, know, God is mad because the fact of the matter when he called man of God, uh, they supposed to bring him the they supposed to bring him perfect sacrifices, meaning that you supposed to bring him people, um, people who. And when they receive Jesus, they wash clean, 
and they've been taught the right things so he can take them and the Holy Ghost and take them and you can help form that in them and then they can go on and see that's what you're supposed to bring God that kind of sacrifice you're not supposed to bring God people that sit in a building you got them there and you keep them there and they never do anything you don't you see that's not how it works people that's in there powerless because what you're doing is you're giving God now sacrifice to people that are that, that are useless they don't want to do the will of God they want to do the will of they self they busy bodies always in the world but never in the word see you can't bring God those kind of sacrifices and so man of God you are supposed to bring this to God you can't bring that to God you supposed to bring sacrifice to God good sacrifices and so you supposed to bring them people that want to be soldiers that want God they want to they want to dedicate their whole life they want to take out these high places that um, this is what you're supposed to bring them if you can't bring them this then you shouldn't then you know what you shouldn't do it at all you see and so what ended up happening is people trying to bring God any kind of sacrifices they're trying to sell Jesus Jesus knew that why Jesus told the multitude he said if you ain't willing to pick up your cross and follow me you ain't willing to die to the flesh die to everything give me everything then you know what I I can't do nothing with you so he straight to he he we weren't trying to sell itself he told you if you're not willing to do this because he know I cannot be a high priest of God I cannot bring him these kind of sacrifices. I can't bring him these half-half people, these lukewarm people. I can't bring him them people that their works are not, uh, in, in the eyes of my God, their works are not good. So he can't do that. And so therefore, we can't do it. You see, we can't do it either. So we can't just give, we can't just come to God and bring him any kind of person. For as, you know what, you can't give him any kind of sacrifice. And so this was what these people was doing because in the church, they supposed to help form these people and they was crippling the people and they were making the people where the people were powerless, useless, but they are, they're every, but people are giving them power. They're giving them respect. I need to talk to my pastor every time somebody asks them a question that they don't know about God. They don't know about the word. Oh, I got to ask my pastor. Why, 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 why you don't know? So you've been taught to ask my pastor. You've been taught to rely on that or in your own laziness. This is what didn't happen. So you didn't put yourself in when you lame, blind, and cripple, and that's not the kind of sacrifice God wants. God wants you to be ready for every good work. And for you to be that way, you're going to have to submit yourself to our Lord Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So, therefore, you can go to the next stage of your evolution, you see, where you can evolve into where Jesus was and where he wants you to be. You can get there. He wants you to be there. See, people act like Jesus wanted to be sitting there by himself, and he don't want you to come in and be a co-heir. He wants you to come into this, but he can't do anything if you don't if you don't believe that you're supposed to be here, if you don't believe that you can do something, if you don't believe that you're really a child of God. You know, I've seen something earlier that uh, I've seen that was on my, um, checking out one of my social pages, and I've seen some people on there uh, um, debating about perfection, and these people could be debating about perfection and see, this is the thing that I want to show you that the devil likes to do with people. Uh, get people in this kind of situation where these believers are going back and forth, um, debating uh, or arguing or whatever you want to call it, uh, about being perfect. You can't, no one perfect, you know. Uh, we believers ain't per perfect. We ain't supposed to be perfect. We perfect. We Only Jesus perfect. But it's like, why would Jesus tell you that be like your father perfect? Because, see, they're trying to look at perfection the way humans look at perfection. They're trying to look at what a man, look at another man, like I never did anything uh, wrong perfection. So they're looking at a human being perfection instead of perfect obedience. Instead of God telling you to do something and you go forth and seeking God's will and perfection. Therefore, I listen to God in perfection. I'm obeying God. You're already in perfect righteousness in, in doing this. So obedience is where you're going to lie your perfection. But they're looking at deeds of, uh, you know, well, I look at you, you look at me, your face don't look perfected. You may say things may not be perfect or, or I may think it's not perfect in my eye. So they're looking at flesh perfection, you see. And, and, and then they're debating about, well, the bodies. And your body ain't there, your body full of sin, your body. And they're debating this here. And they forget that the body, you, you are in God's image. If God was so disgusted with your body, then why didn't he change your body? He changed you. He gave you a new spirit because at the heart of a man is where these things come out. The wickedness comes out. You see, your, your body just got, your mind just got used to the knowledge of what it is because we didn't grow up in the knowledge and we was all covered in darkness. So we got this knowledge and it's stuck in our heads. 
And so, therefore, we need to take, get God to help us renew our minds to pull these things out, to put his word in to understand these. That's what that is. But you can go to perfection. You're already in perfection, but you just don't understand you are in perfection. For as you got a brand new spirit, a spirit of excellence and a perfection. You see, you've been washed clean. You never did anything wrong in your life. See, you're already in perfection in that way. But, see, they don't understand that you just need to go into perfecting obedience, obedience, obeying God, and, and and that's the goal you need to go to. And that's what the things the devil use. So what we're going to do is, since the show is up here, it seems, and so we're going to come back tomorrow with part two, and we're going to go further in this teaching. Hopefully you learned something from this, and we'll be back tomorrow at our regular time. Blessing and peace be to you. This is Courtney Jones, and I'm out. <laughs>